welcome you to another uh, Harari conversation, which is uh, the first uh, in the year 2022. And uh, in this discussion today, I'm glad to be introducing to you one gentleman uh, who has become a friend of mine in a short space of time. And uh, his uh, name is Kabila Stefan. Uh, I know for a lot of Zimbabweans, Kabila, they will definitely relate that to, to, to the DR Congo. Yeah. And you'll be very right. Kabila Stefan is a... Uh, a curator uh, from the Diara Congo is a curator at Waza Art Center, which is located in the Lumbumbash. But uh, currently, uh, Kabila is uh, a resident artist at uh, Livingstone Gallery in Zambia. So beginning this year, he has decided to uh, start uh, by a gent to the National Gallery of Zimbabwe, and we have been having him last week. So before he leaves today, he said, okay, I'll be, give a brief chat uh, on your weekly and your regular Arara Conversation platform. So we are grateful to have Mr. Kabila here with us, but uh, by way of introduction, he is also working on a similar project, which is part of his research, but we have decided him also to engage. This conversation is also his way of engaging with our school of visual work, which because we are on a lockdown, we do not have our students here on campus. Uh, we have also decided to engage with our instructors, our staff, and all of you who have been sent this thing, we have been invited through this link to be part of this discussion. His talk today, uh, Kabila, is uh, titled Unlearning and Relearning. Uh, that is a loaded uh, title for a curator, uh, especially for those of us that are in the galleries. So, uh, Mr. Kabila, yeah. I welcome you. I also give you this opportunity to meet uh, people who have joined us here. Part of them, uh, uh, staff from the National Gallery. We've got one officer who has joined us from our provincial office in Manikaland, Miss Elizabeth Musha there. We've got other staff members just from here, but from their um, offices. We've got Mr. Nyakujga there with his other colleagues uh, from school, Mem Doris, Mr. Mshamba and Mr. Mayenga there. We've also got this Chisango who has joined us. So, Mr. Kabila, I give you the room. Uh, take us through your journey, and we will give people the chance and uh, room to engage your uh, deliberations. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Livingstone, for introducing my, myself to all the, the team, the National Gallery team who are here and uh, students who are part of uh, this conversation. And I'm not alone in this conversation. I was also asked to one of my colleagues, Benny Blow, to join me as part of uh, our team in Livingston. I don't know if any of you are able to introduce yourself, please. Just a short, a brief introduction, please. Uh, hi, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wanga, Wanga Kapumpa, AKA Benny Blow. Benny Blow is my uh, nom de plume or uh, pen name. I'm a writer and artist from Zambia, currently based in Livingston. Uh, yeah, I've been working with Kabila to try and uh, get in touch with our indigenous knowledge and uh, do some unlearning and, and, and create some beautiful art. Yeah, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, without taking a long time, I want just to show you for people who will maybe at one time come to the Mumbashi, here is the website of Waza Art Center. If you have, uh, you want to have a look on, you can go through it. That's where I was working as a librarian and 
yeah, and on others many projects. And this is our locals uh, website. You can go through it and also visit our uh, project what we are working on and yeah, and learn about uh, what we are doing also. Um, I want to share this. I don't know if you can see the screen. Yes, yes. Um, good. This is my small bio and yeah, I can share this document after the presentation for people who want to, to see it. Yeah, I've titled the, the presentation um, on learning and relearning because uh, I think that we, we, are, we have normally uh, learned at school, we have be part of uh, our educational uh, study through primary school, secondary school, until to the university. Uh, personally, I have learned uh, in pedagogy in secondary school and in, at the university I've studied philosophy. Uh, I'm postgraduate in philosophy. And after that, I've, I've started uh, my study in curatorial practice at the Bergen University in Norway. And uh, in my own journey, what I'm realizing is um, our almost uh, program educational program in Africa, in Congo, particularly where I'm coming from, it's based on a colonial study, on a colonial program, where we are learning most of the knowledge who are not related to our own history. Our history was we have to learn and engage with as a citizen. And that's why I, I was like motivated to say, okay, let us maybe have this conversation about how we can unlearn that history and to relearn ourselves and how to engage uh, ourselves to that. Personally, um, 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 yeah, as I've said, I'm working, I'm a curator working with artists and it's part of my journey to meet people and try to have a conversation with them. I'm trying to see like when I'm, I'm going on this journey, meet people, I will be able to find myself uh, through that journey and yeah uh, i know that there are teachers in this conversation they are uh, learners and at local uh, livingstone office for contemporary art what we are trying to do uh, in our program called uh, tuning in uh, another way from seeing what is uh, a year um, program where we host artists, upcoming artists who want to find their own way of practicing uh, their art. And what I will show you in this uh, slide, two of uh, the exhibition was like the result of uh, what we have uh, realized as work or conversation with uh, those artists in, uh, in Livingstone. This is one of the, the work, as you can see, um, it's uh, the, the exhibition itself, it's titled, The Sign Will Always Shine. It was uh, curated by Mr. Mungi, myself, and assisted by Sana Jinwala, who she's also artist and curator from Zambia, and uh, also Jonathan Tikala, who is also a, a curator from Zambia. This Sorry. work, it was working. Sorry ben? to interrupt. I, I don't know if, if everyone, are you you're showing the slide from the sun will shine? The sun yeah, will you always can shine? See that. Yeah. No, it's still showing the local website on my end. I don't okay. know if everyone can yes, see Yes, yes, yes. It's still the local website. Good. Let me try to do this. Try to share again this. Yes, you can see this, please. Yes, it's yes, a yes. different picture. Good. Yeah, I was saying that um, the exhibition, it was titled The Sun Will Always Shine. What is, um, yeah, we was trying to reflect on how um, the political situation, because last year in Zambia, it was an electoral year, 
and we was trying to revisit how uh, politicians are uh, they can be symbolized, the power can be symbolized by the sun, and how uh, we can think that, or themselves think that they still always shine, and how we can revisit that relationship to say, as a citizen, even artists as citizens, we can engage with our own history. As you know, uh, Livingstone and Big Falls are tourist town. Uh, this is uh, Megan Nakmara works. She has tried to criticize uh, the way that we have like an exotic image of uh, what is Livingstone or Big Town. She has realized some brochure, as you can see there. And on those brochure or inside the brochure, when you open it, there are critical texts about, uh, yeah, how writers, thinkers, or political leaders in Africa are trying to engage as citizen and try to change the perspective on how we are, we are looking at ourselves as African and how we are trying to, to fight for our freedom. Yeah, this is on one of the work. And the second work, as you can see, there is filters to the windows is still Megan Namara's uh, uh, installation. Uh, this exhibition, when you come during the day or in the night, there was another experience because the filters related to the position of the sun was how uh, change the atmosphere in the space. And as you can see, there is some maize in maize plants. Those are Mr. Ngoma's work who was trying to, to reflect on how we are trying to live today with uh, uh, ancestral seeds or main seeds and others material to, to live, how we are living today with all those, uh, yeah. And this is still Mr. Mr. Moon, Mr. Uh, Lucas, as you can see himself, he has tried to realize uh, this work is an installation. He has put the sacks, and on those sacks, he has put his figure, uh, his portrait, because, yeah, as I've said before, that uh, last year it was an electoral year in Zambia, and most of the, the politicians, when they come to us, to us as citizens to vote for them, they are come sometimes with just millimil and sell to us and ask us to vote for them. And he was trying to criticize that position, how we can engage differently as citizens uh, to what we are doing. And this is uh, another work of uh, Patrick Haloba's work. We was trying to rethink, yes, using material, its tones, uh, mirror, and uh, he is right under the mirror, as you can see, and the, the letters or the words can be reflected under the mirror and you can read it, you know. Uh, and you're trying to think how, when we are going to vote, what is our responsibility? Uh, the mirror will symbolize how we can reflect ourselves in the booth, in the electoral booth to see myself and engage as a citizen. The stone was there as like, when I'm voting, is it when I'm bringing that stone like a vote, am I building my country or am I destroying it? Yeah, and it was really interesting. He was also play with uh, some text because at the beginning himself is a, is a writer, but he is trying to learn with to work with other material. And yeah, that was uh, his presentation or his uh, artwork. I want maybe to stop by here and maybe more to engage, or if I can go ahead and show others work, maybe this one, this is another exhibition uh, titled The Glimmer of Resistance. Um, it's a, one of the artists was part of uh, this exhibition is here with us, it's Benny Blue and Isaac Alambata. 
and it was curated by uh, Imel Dampilipili and I. As you can see on those images, um, they are um, passers. Benny, can you help me in passers? Read maths? Yes. Read maths. And the book, uh, Isaac Alambata, this Isaac Alambata's work, he was trying to revisit uh, David Livingstone's journey or history because most of the time when you are listening to David Livingstone, it's someone who was like, they're talking about more about him, even in Livingstone as a city. Even here uh, in Harare, I was so surprised to see that even to the state house, there is David Livingstone statue. And I was like, wow, I was a little bit shocked to see that. But anyway, uh, those are, yeah, you would like to revisit the history of Zambia through David Livingstone image, but in the same time to try to make a focus on other persons who was at David Livingstone in his journey. And that's why you have used Mpasas as the representation of where those persons was buried after their death and the stones where you have tried to imagine other names because we know just Susie and Chuma's name as a person who was with David Livingstone in his journey. And for him in this book, as you can see, there is a book there. He has removed all the history or the element, the historical element, which is not, is not agree as an artist, he said, no, this is not something right. And he has removed it and tried to rewrite this uh, uh, history through this exhibition. It was really a dark exhibition. When you get in this space, this is my personal experience, you can feel like there's people who persons who want to talk, but they don't have that authority. And I really appreciate how uh, Isaac Kalambata was trying to give them a word to say something about this history of Zambia. Um, I want to go ahead. Yeah, this is Benny Blow, uh, Buanga Kapumpa's work. He's here, I can talk about his work. Please, Benny, can you talk about your work? <laughs> I don't allow myself to talk about someone's work if he's there. Benny. Okay, <laughs> sure thing. Uh, I hope you can get me okay. My fan is a bit noisy on my laptop. But we can get you um, clear. Okay, great. Um, I had four pieces of work in this exhibition and uh, the main theme around them was perception and trying to change people's perception on how they see things. Um, whether it's, it's in the conversations that we have or in the history books that we read or things that we read in the newspapers, et cetera, et cetera. So this particular work that he's showing um, was called uh, The Gift of Gab. Um, which the expression is um, means the ability to talk uh, and explain, I guess, explain your way out of it through talking. But the perception aspect of it comes in the text. There's a question there. I can't remember the exact text or, or what it says, but it just asks people to question the some of the ideology, specifically in relation to Chitenge material and um, where it's from. It's considered, uh, in Zambia, we call it Chitenge in other places. I think it's called Ankara. Uh, in Malawi, I think it's Kitenge or something. I could be wrong, but the point was that we have this perception that this is African fabric and uh, created here, when in fact it's um, got roots in, in, in with the Dutch and was brought here and the printer kind of changed. So. Um, my objective was just to question, to say, how can we rethink this? How can we change our perception on something? Perhaps through the gift of gab or through the gift of talking to each other and having these conversations and maybe we can learn about uh, the true histories of, of, of our work. Yeah, that's, that's in relation to this piece. Um, the two pictures you see there. Uh, the one at the top was an installation. It was a booth. Uh, I'm sure you have an, do you have another photo of it? Okay. 
Yes. This one um, was called Dr. Wanga. Um, I've been doing some research on traditional healers and um, Ngangas or witch doctors and their practice. Um, so I don't know if this is common in Zimbabwe as well, but I know in Kenya and in Malawi and some parts of Southern Africa, you see these banners where uh, Ngangas or Ngakas are offering these services. So with this piece of work, I was trying to change people's perceptions in that um, what if these uh, Ngangas could are actually giving good work or good service because if you see so many banners around town and around different uh, townships then perhaps people are getting positive results so what if we had a, a nanga or witch doctor who could offer this uh, social political solutions uh, which is dr wanga the text there if you read it says offering new perspectives um, so some of the offers that the services that Dr. Wang offered were leadership change, COVID-19 cure, uh, bring back lost lovers, boost the exchange rate, manhood enlargement, expose corrupt politicians and promotion at work. So um, some of these uh, services are obviously, they, you, you may have seen them on, on, on these banners from uh, Nangas, but some of them are also socially, politically charged, uh, boost the exchange rate, uh, leadership change, and that sort of thing. So the idea was just to get people to rethink what uh, these people do with their indigenous knowledge. What if they actually offer solutions? And inside the, the booth, when you step in, there was an instruction to say, uh, in these uncertain times, what would you like Dr. Wanga to do for you? And it was an interactive installation. There are some sticky notes there. You can see the yellow, orange, and green there. People were meant to write some of their requests. And the response was good. Some people uh, took it lightheartedly. They were asking for uh, iPhone 12 Pro or PlayStation 5 <laughs> or, or to win uh, these, these betting games and stuff. But other people really had some personal requests. Uh, there was one in particular that touched me where someone wanted to for their sister to be healed and to walk again another wanted to pass her exams and become a, a strong leader in society you know that sort of thing so as much as it there were, there were elements of humor it was also open to like people changing their perspectives and considering that perhaps maybe dr wanga could offer solutions yeah That's interesting. Hmm. Thank you. Oh. Oh. So, so, so uh, Kabila, are you still coming back, or we can open the dialogue now? Yeah, thank you very much, Benny, talking about your work. Um, I want maybe to stop by here about the presentation. And I want just to bring on the table um, one metaphor, one image, and really reflect on and try to start the conversation there. Um, I was thinking about what means to work, and particularly as artists. When we go to the market, we can find the table. Someone who is selling the table is something we can buy and go with to our apps, put it in this space, something who can be tangible and can stay for longer. And when we go to, to the market, we can buy the bread. And we can also buy that bread, go with at home, but that bread can be uh, stay for longer in the house. If we doesn't eat it, after one week, we can't use that bread or we can use it for something else, but we can't use it again. But if we go and as we are here in the gallery to buy piece, when we bring that art piece in our home, I think that art piece can be stayed there for a very long time. And even other generations, can see that, can be in touch with and 
can yeah it can still share something more important symbols and people can engage i would like to share image here and start the conversation asking how ourselves as students are we engaged in this you know learning of how we are doing our studies here at the national galleries how are we selling ourselves are we working as, as someone who is want to fabric a table are we working as someone who want to fabric a bread or are we engaged of like someone who want to to build or to construct or to create because we are talking about creation to create an art piece who can be here for a long time who can engage with a future generation and we can still talk about it yes i think that i i stop by there and i let us talk about uh yeah the the, the conversation can be open thank you very much livingston for for welcoming well, yeah. hello Hello. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Kabila, for, for, for the wonderful talk. Uh, maybe I, I'm throwing this to you and, uh, and, 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 and other listeners as well to say uh, the, the process of, 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 of unlearning and relearning is quite interesting one. And uh, maybe as curators, uh, we are part of the process of creating uh, what I can call memory you know because people like david livingston are carefully curated there's a certain perception and uh, a certain character that we associate him with and this is part of why people are now beginning to ask questions like he wasn't alone there were other you know people around him uh specifically africans who are not recognized by this history that we are getting let's look around the people that led him to get this to this famous so I, I i was trying to think as you were talking to say as curators how do we make our work specifically the exhibitions to be something that fits into the classroom for as permanent material uh uh i'm thinking around you know some of the exhibitions that you do they are powerful the message is very clear, but maybe it might not reach everyone, you know, in terms of the audience. And how do we uh, get to universalize that kind of process where it's an exhibition, it's a powerful one, but probably it's just, you know, limited to Livingstone or to, 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 to whichever gallery that is uh, hosting that kind of uh, uh, fantastic work. Uh, I, I'm thinking around that to say, what, what do you think would be the way forward? Mm. So I think uh, one of the process that were, that's why even the uh, Livingstone Office for Contemporary Art as a project is there. We are trying to, to revisit our history and also to, to feed the back because the gap, there is a gap of knowledge between uh, a whole generation of our indigenous knowledge or our indigenous uh, ancestors was doing their practice as people just to live with object and yeah, practicing, you know. And today, how are we able to, to feed that gap of knowledge there is also a, a certain uh, epistemologic violence between that because, you know, uh, when we was colonized, we have, thought, we have thought that this is something bad. It's related to, it's become a witchcraft. Huh? And Benny Blow is doing a good research on witchcraft uh, and uh, uh, witchcraft and to see also how we can relearn that uh, idea or that perspective. How can we change our own reading to our ancestors' indigenous knowledge? And how can we reconnect to that? 
personally, one, one of the thing I think it's something important to do, I'm Luba from Congo, but I think that if I want to learn about myself, maybe through journey, it's quite important to meet other people, to meet other culture. And as Bantu culture, there is something who is more similar in the way that we are doing things, in the way that we are living. And how can I come and meet people and find that, oh, there is something who, who is related to my culture and I can learn about myself through this other culture. I think about talking about the methodology, there is that to meet other people. There is how we are engaging with our own history to meet people who has like uh, the knowledge in their hand and how they can facilitate us to, to connect with those knowledge and engage with as African. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Uh for the wonderful response. Uh, waiting for others to, if you want to give a contribution, uh, please just raise your hand or let me know. Um, my, 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 my last comment really is to say, I, I'm afraid of a situation where we throw both the bathwater and the baby in the process of trying to decolonize, you know, things where oftentimes there's a very thin line between uh the correct history that is you know afrocentric and uh, the one that we are saying is quite eurocentric and uh that thin line is really a matter of maybe perception and misunderstanding like you are now bringing in a very peculiar angle on 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 issues about indigenous knowledge systems which is something that has been quite missing but but my 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 my, 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 my comment really is to say, I, I think there's so much work to do, uh, but how then do we deal with a situation where we, this is the material that we have in terms of passing on the, the, the information, either in a classroom or, or, or a process where maybe the instructor is faced with, you know, mm -hmm. you really know where you want to drive to. But this is not what is examined in, 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 in when the candidates are going to be uh, writing their final, you know, diploma sort of degree. This is not what is going to be examined. And, and we are trying, I'm trying to think here, what do we do? We are in this catch-22 situation. You have a, 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 a curriculum, you know, or a syllabus to, 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 to just, you know, uh, strictly abide to. But then we are also on this drive that seems not to be getting anywhere near the classroom. But it's kind of a political talk, so so I, I, I'm thinking around this kind of challenge. I don't know what others think, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, you are you are free to 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 contribute uh, to this discussion. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Kabila with us, and uh, he's leaving Zimbabwe today. He will be crossing over to the next you know town in in Livingstone, Zambia. So 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 let's uh, enjoy his talk by way of engaging him. Yeah, maybe before someone else uh, asks a question, just to know, uh, just to notice that there is, uh, you know, when we are going with school, we are talking about master, teacher, but I, I don't think that uh, in our own culture, there was like that hierarchical way of looking at people are facilitated why persons to engage with knowledge. Uh, there is, that's what we are also trying to do in terms of methodology in Livingstone, is to have um, facilitators and also uh, we call, we are learners, but even, even facilitators for us, we are, everyone is learning because we consider that uh, everyone, every day we are on that journey of learning, we can learn from each other, we can learn even from students because we can have a certain way of doing things who can open us to other perspectives and maybe to better way of look at things because we are in a creative way of, of trying to build the world. And something also, um, it's the horizontality between the teacher or the facilitator of the knowledge and 
the students. Oh, we, 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 yeah, they are artists, they are curators, but we are almost trying to be on the same level to share the authority and to see how we are engaging ourselves in that exercise. Yeah, at least uh, your questions are welcome. Please. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone who can raise up a hand and 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 uh, Miss Musha, I see you have unmuted. Do you want to give a contribution? Oh yes. Uh, thank you so much, Mchefa, uh, and uh, the colleagues there. Thank you so very much for your presentations and uh, talking about unlearning and relearning. Yeah, that's 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 quite a mammoth task, I would say, where I see a lot of work to be done, like you even ask Mr. Chefa there to say, how do we do it? Are we not, um, we need to be careful not to lose it all um, in the process of wanting to, to uh, correct the situation of decolonization. Um, my thinking when we talk of schools and how to do it, I, I believe in Zimbabwe, we have started, uh, I, I would relate this to the 1999 Zinamasanga Commission that uh, spoke about education and saying uh, that's more of um, the Western uh, history than our own. And I'm glad to see change coming where we talk of this animal color, uh, C-A-L-A -A in caps. Uh, and quite a number of educators, teachers, um, under the Ministry of Education are not comfortable with this. But my comment is a parent and a, a teacher by profession. Yes, I'm here at the National Gallery as regional director, but um, once a teacher, always a teacher. I see a lot of positivity looking at color. Uh, the full for color being curriculum uh, assessment, learning activity, uh, sorry, continuous, not curriculum, continuous assessment of learning activities. And my understanding to that is uh, exactly what the first presenter was speaking about to say he's a resident artist in Livingstone and he wishes to travel um, all over Africa, interacting, seeing, trying to, to realize who one is by meeting a number of other people finding similarities, differences, and so forth. Where then probably that question you are putting across uh, uh, Livingstone, Jeffa, that uh, who, uh, where is the truth uh, from what we have and that which we probably think was, um, was uh, rubbed off from us as Africans. I would want to think if continuously we interact and um, continuously uh, um, believe in ourselves, um, uh, interacting through these conversations and even on one-on-one, -on -one, uh, um, appreciating what we do as, as, as a people and not imitating. Um, I'm sure we will get there which is not just overnight, but it's quite a process uh, that we need to go through. But I'm glad, like I'm saying, that we have started talk of this conversation, talk of ECAC, uh, that the National Gallery of Zimbabwe had, uh, held last year. Uh, and we are saying if it can be uh, annually held, engaging as Africans, speak about it and see those traits of being African. And then I'm sure we'll be uh, somewhere in 10 years time or so for our future generation. Sorry, future generations. Thank you. 
Thank, thank you, thank you, Musha, there for 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 the quite uh, wonderful uh, comments, and I'm sure for 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 Kabila and colleagues, uh, Musha has been taking a case of our own education system scenario here, where we have a new police that is uh, you know uh, send a lot of people into some 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 quite a discomfort because uh, it's a new way of doing things. Uh, but that's partly coming from a recommendation that was done by a commission of inquiry back in the 80s, late 80s, but it was shelved. But before I make a long comment, I would like to ask Kura there. He was raising up his hand. Uh, Kura, can you please uh, give your contribution? I don't know whether it's a question or it's a, but please, uh, it's, it's, it's your turn. Thank you very much. Hello? Yes, we can hear you, madam. Oh, you can hear me. It's Doris Gampira, one of the instructors at the National Gallery. And here I'm with uh, some of the students. Uh, we are watching you on projector. So we have been hearing the whole conversation. Uh, it got me interested when you talk about the indigenous knowledge system. So I'm saying, um, what are we doing? to bring those practitioners of the indigenous knowledge that we're talking about to the classrooms or to the galleries. I've seen a great exhibition that you have um, shown there and some artists were using the reed maze, the material culture um, of Zambia. So I was wondering, are we, are we doing workshops or when we have openings, are we bringing them to speak to the people and demystify the connection between the material culture and the witchcraft powers that you are talking about. And then the second thing you spoke about the David Livingstone sculpture. We are seeing that in America and uh, Europe, there is a revolution of um, people being angered by what would have happened during the colonial period uh, with those uh, statues or with the people who are who have those statues. So what, what do you think uh, about Africa? Are we going to be also destroying the sculptures that have been erected like the David Livingstone, that sculptures that you're talking about? And also trying to think about the artists who also made that. I'm, I'm just throwing up questions that you and just to understand how you view all this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Madam Kura, for the, the those very important questions you are putting on the table. As I think this is uh, a conversation, I will not want to answer to all those questions. And if someone else thinks that he has a contribution, he can raise up a hand and respond. But I will try to give my thoughts. Uh, yeah. What I think related to what we can do. Uh, actually is to engage as citizens with what we have in our program. Uh, like I will say about Congolese program because I'm from Congo. Um, how, what, what are we plan as, as, uh, as a knowledge related like uh, our own history? How are we teaching that history? You know, I'm, 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 I'm coming from a school where uh, I'm repeating, like to repeat, to repeat how uh, without engaging my critical sense to what, what am I really saying actually? It's like they are, <laughs> it's like they are indoctrinating me, you know, to repeat, you know, like to say there is something interesting we, we, in Congo we say uh, when we are learning our history, we say in French, uh, L'embouchure du fleuve Congo a été découvert par Diego Cao. Means Diego Cao has discovered uh, the uh, Congo River. It means in the Congo River there was no African, there was no, nobody there. But and even now, that phrase is still teaching in our curriculum. And for me, it's how are we engaged as citizens, as African? with that history, what we are, even our daughter are taught in at school. And how can we unlearn those knowledge? Because they are not knowledge, they are ideology. How can we destroy this, those ideology and 
relearn. It's a long process because we have learned that at school that that's true. That is not true, it's wrong. But how are we engaged with those history? Because the history in general uh, are written by the winner of the war. And how can we rewrite that history? Uh, that's just a, a small uh, sample of, of what we can find in many of like curriculum in many con uh, uh, countries on the continent in the way that we are learning a wrong history and not our own right history. There is also, yeah, we have to demystify um, our relationship with what we call witchcraft. And today we are talking about the question of repatriation. I think uh, <laughs> there are a lot of objects who are in Europe, but today if they are asking me, are you able to host those objects and engage yourself with most of the people in or most of the citizens and most of people who are believing who are Christian, who are, I don't know, uh, in what Western religion, they will tell you that no, I can't engage with those objects because they are witchcraft. And personally, I will ask a simple question. How can we be able to engage with what our ancestors was living with every day? And can we consider that all the ancestors they were with? No, I don't think so. I think that we have to engage with those objects and to reappropriate it today and maybe to reactivate it. For me, those are like something or some approach we can have and to be free minded to say that, oh, we have thought that, but how can we think differently and engage with those objects? Yeah. And talking about status or statue around the world, I think we don't have to put it down, but I think maybe we have to rewrite a history. You have to put some notice and say David Livingstone and this part of the history of like thought that is a discovery, but we can write another history, a part of that history. What maybe, maybe, maybe Kabila, before I get to Ben Blow is raising his hand there. And to link up your, your, your response and what uh, Doris has been uh, putting across, my, 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 my biggest uh, challenge on the whole discourse is to say, if we are going to pull down a statue, and then what? Beyond just pulling down the statue, what are mm. we saying? Are we putting up our own statue that, you know, correct that kind of, you know, memory? Or uh, what are we doing? Uh, beyond just renaming and, 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 and dealing with these sculptures, right? Because there is an ideology behind. So what, what are we saying about that ideology? What are we cultivating? And what are we putting as a replacement to that as a process of relearning? We have unlearned and we want to relearn, but what are we saying? What is the new philosophy mm -hmm. beyond? But I've also been thinking about uh, two, 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 two things here. The artist is is a, is a very active is an actor, coming up with that you know powerful kind of uh, work, but then at the other end, he has also some livelihood to say if I put up some beautiful work, for whichever ideology, as long as I get paid, then it doesn't matter. If I'm paid to make a powerful artwork for David Livingston, even if I'm very Afrocentric. Because there is a dollar sign to that, I might be tempted to buy that ideology for commercial reasons. But I'm just thinking around that. But uh, Ben Blow, you raised your hand. Can you give us your contribution? Thank you. So this, I, I just like to try and answer uh, Kura's questions. Uh, very good questions, actually. Um, in terms of what we're trying to do to engage the traditional practitioners, Nangas, traditional healers, um, as LOCA, for example, we don't have active programs just yet, uh, but as maybe 
the, the the country itself even though i'm not sure who started this there is a traditional healers society of zambia uh where these traditional healers actually register and and uh they're practicing i'm not sure how how far that goes or how then that now relates to any workshops or any outreach programs they have but for example myself with the research i'm doing um there's a traditional healer uh, his name is dr katungu that i went to see and um in one of my visits i carried the book about uh, it's called magic divination and witchcraft amongst the barossa people of northern Rhodesia. so this book uh has some examples of of what what i'm i'm trying to avoid calling it witchcraft these days i'm trying part of the research is to find a better name for it i think witchcraft has its own translation and connotations to what the practitioners actually think it is. Uh, even the word witch doctor, I think is not quite appropriate. But anyway, this book, I, I, uh, when I went in, I showed uh, Dr. Katungu. Uh, initially, what, when we just, for, uh, just to, to give you some context, when we just started our conversations, he was a bit apprehensive. You know, he'd hold, withhold information. He was very skeptical about what I was asking about and he thought, who is this guy? Why is he asking me all these questions? But uh, as the relationship kind of developed or grew and I showed him this book and I told him this book is by Europeans and you see what they've written here. Uh, I, I'm trying to write a book similar to this, but I want it to be done by a Zambian person. This is one of the reasons why I'm coming to you. I'd like to gain some of this knowledge. And from there, he was quite responsive. You know, he'd be very glad he's like, he offer up information and tell me, encourage me, yes, so when you write your book, you know, your information will be very good and accurate and to be a very good book. So in terms of engaging them in, in that sense, it's like I'm trying to get him involved. I'm trying to get other practitioners involved, as well as when I produce the work for, we have an exhibition coming up in April. I'm hoping to invite him and whoever else I will speak to, you know, so that they can come and see what the results of those conversations are and perhaps they um they can also then now realize what what role they play uh, i've just seen sir livingstone's message uh, and just to wrap up in terms of the statues uh in relation to what mr livingstone said as well is um i think taking them down on one hand i think it's a good thing because that also makes a statement you know as much as we might not yet have statues to replace them or exact ideology I think that makes a statement to say, look, if at least if we have some sort of plan or ideology in place, it doesn't have to be well, or everything has to be set in place and put out there, but it will make a statement to citizens to say, look, these things are, it's not necessarily right, but we're taking them down as we begin to establish and unlearn. Then from there, we can go on because some citizens assume everything they see is correct in that aspect. You know, if they see these statues of Livingstone they believe, yes, he was, you know, he discovered Victoria Falls and he did all these things, you know. So just playing devil's advocate there, I think it makes a statement as well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ben Blode. Thank you so much. Uh, the reason we, this is an interesting dialogue, but the reason we are ending at uh, quarter two is because uh, Kabila is his departure at two, so we need him to be ready and, and uh, get to his... Uh, uh flight on time uh and Musha, you had your hand up can you make your contribution before we give kabila time to uh round up his discussion oh thank you um in short i just wanted to say uh, uh destroying it or not destroying it physically i would um, I, I do support uh, that idea of destroying, but not physically destroying. Uh, what do I mean? Uh, I, I mean, if we can just have strong ideologies as Africa that are valuable to our own um, children and our own selves as a people that we value. And so then we will divert from the David... Uh, Livingstone sculptures and, and put focus on our own as Africa, which to me is kind of ignoring and, and um, uh, 
discourage even the future generations not to to, to, to look at, at the Livingstone uh, thing, but maybe just refer to them uh, to say once upon a time. That's my thinking, and I re relate this uh, said to this subject to. Um, the degree program that I've done on sociology, uh, social science, to say all this you are speaking about is about resources, rewards, and opportunities. Uh, we got to be colonized because these guys wanted resources from Africa and continuously they do want resources from us. And all um, I'm trying to put across is maybe we need also to have strong ideologies uh, talking of, of, of an artist as an influential person to push across our identity and how we can relearn as Africa to be who we are, not to be enticed by these people is when we have our economies put right. We have everything as Africa, but we are the poorest when we uh, uh, looked at. And so if we can have to also work on ourselves as Africa in terms of economy and be self-sufficient, then I think we'll get somewhere. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Musha. Uh, Kabila, your final remarks. Yeah, I, I would like also maybe to hear one of the students, but uh, no question for them, even one contribution. I would like really to hear that. Maybe Kura, Miss Doris, do, do you have a, a one student by you there to give some remarks? All right, please. I don't know, between Doris and, and uh, Mr. Nyakujga there, anyone closer to one of our students then to give some remarks? Yes, let me ask one. Yeah, because it's important to engage with them also and hear what they are thinking about those questions. The future situation is today and it's then. It's hard. This is super, super fluent. Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one? No, no, no. There's just one Ngomo who said this is super fluent and, and, and then disappeared. <laughs> Another student close by to give us some remarks. Good. Dits. Dits in Umjolo, go ahead, please. Okay, okay. Uh, I know what it is like when, when those guys are together, you know. Uh -huh. it, it, they give, but, but thank you so much, uh, Kabila, for the wonderful talk. And yes. I think they are picking the lines in terms of uh, the discussion, the direction, and what we are talking about. Uh, by way of um, our final remarks, I would want to wish you a safe and pleasant journey back to Livingstone. And this is one of our platforms which we always engage when you think and feel you have some further discussion to this kind of topic, please. We'll be very, very grateful and, and quite, uh, you know, uh, interested in hosting you on this other conversation talk. Uh, end time, please get in touch. Now that we have details, even for our students, anyone who is working on a similar topic that you think is quite, you know, uh, relevant, please reach out to Kabila. We are going to share with your instructors uh, his conducts so that you can also share some Zambian experiences, some Congolese experiences, and on whatever creative work that you might want to put up. This is another opportunity for you to think of engaging and, and you know partnering other people from outside our borders. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was a wonderful talk. Uh, until we meet again, thank you so much.